Have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. One of the coolest things I ever built on a custom FDM printer was a staging area. And all it was was just an acrylic sheet engraved on the top with a coordinate system. It was produced by using a laser cutter to perform the engraving and cuts. And to be completely transparent with you guys, that laser cutter was a bit more expensive than my current setup. Luckily, with the affordable option being the Atomstack A5 Pro, I was able to produce another staging area like I did before. To do this, I had to engrave a metric coordinate system on top of my wood and have it cut out only using my Atomstack Pro. I'm going to call this the free method to laser engraving and cutting because to complete my part, I would only be using the free softwares available online. So this would include Inkscape to create my PNG SVG files and GRBL laser to control the engraver. So how did I create my part? Well, let me tell you. Okay, when you first open up Inkscape, the document properties need to match the width and height of your laser cutter. The Atomstack A5 Pro has a width of 410 millimeters and a height of 400 millimeters. You can then save these properties as a template and you won't have to mess with these again. You can go to File and click on Save Template and this will save these document properties for our laser bed size. I went ahead and made these my default template by clicking on the box. So in order to engrave this coordinate system that we wanted to make, we had to first learn how to create a PNG file for the laser cutter to engrave. Now, we are only using the free software called Inkscape to produce this PNG file. So this is what we would use to create our coordinate system. Now Inkscape does have a how-to document and other resources online, but this does not work with the Laser GRBL program. This document would have us change the line width to be 0 0.176 millimeters or greater to be engraved on the laser and then we would have to change a line thickness to be 0 0.071 millimeters to be cut set them on different layers and when we loaded them into the printer the engrave or cut would be based on the line thickness I tried this method, but laser GRBL does not read the cut or engrave based on line thickness, but file type. To cut, we would need the file to be a SVG file type, and to engrave, we would need the file to be a PNG file type. So I created my image in Inkscape. It's essentially a 270 millimeter by 270 millimeter box with the image inside of that box. I was worried with the space below my image, but this space was not exported. And you could see that in the preview menu of Inkscape. This is not exported with your image. It's also important to note where the origin of your laser is. Mine would be the bottom left corner and moving forward, I would place all images at the origin. I would also create PNGs within a known box. You don't have to export the box, but it would help you later in GRBL to know the size of the image you are exporting and we're going to do that later. Uh, I exported with the settings of 96 DPI dots per inch and that was pretty much the only thing I needed to change when I was exporting. The second file we had to create was the cut file. 
We want to cut out the coordinate system we just engraved, so we create a 270 millimeter box with four mounting screws. This file will be the cut file, so we have to save it as the SVG file. Placement does matter in Inkscape for the cut lines, so we are starting at the origin in the laser cutter and we need the cut lines to be in the bottom left corner in Inkscape. So now that we had the engrave and cut files created, it was time to turn on the laser cutter. Which brings us to part two of this video. Yep, I'm going to have to take the L on this one. I can only blame myself. This is why I got to set the cut level at the origin, so it doesn't cut up in the area of the engraving. Please don't experience my pain. Learn from me. Be better. When I loaded the SVG cut file on the first attempt in the laser GRBL, I had set up the border speed, you know, the cut speed, and I thought I was just ready to go. This preview I totally paid no attention to and I just blew past it and what I didn't realize was my cut path was not going to start at the laser home. That's where I needed it to be. The engraving outer square and this cut square needed to be in the same location or you just get what just happened to me, a random cut line in the middle of my part. This was actually just fixed by adjusting the cut file in Inkscape by bringing it down. By having my cut rectangle start at the bottom left corner would then align my engraving part to the cut square. I loaded the engraving rectangle at the printer origin also with no offsets. Here was the entire process for my second attempt at engraving and cutting my part in GRBL laser. So you connect your laser first, you're going to load your PNG file into GRBL laser. You're going to want to start with the engraving first. After it's open, you must set the settings you need based on your material. This is mainly gained through an experimental process. So for the size, I didn't use auto size. You can, but you need to make sure the DPI match what you exported from Inkscape. I didn't use it because when I set it at the 96 DPI, the width and height were going to be 270.9 millimeters, and that would have been larger than what I had wanted for my coordinate system. Because I know my engraving fits inside a 270 by 270 millimeter box, I went ahead and set this size manually on the width and height input. Also, uh, important note to make sure the offset is zero. This is below the size section. And any value you have entered in the X and Y offset will raise the location of your image you are engraving, which we do not want. We want it to start engraving at our origin. So now that we've taken care of all of the settings for our engraving, 
we were ready to start the laser. The preview loaded correctly in the window and I saw everything aligned where I wanted it to be. So the next step would to start the engraving process. The cut SVG file is loaded after engraving into laser GRBL. You only really need to adjust the cut speed. This is per your material and the settings. The preview looked good and the cut aligned to where it needed to be. So how do we end up? I'll let you judge for yourself. So here's the finished part all engraved and cut out. It actually turned out really good. I might add some stain to it, really bring out the engraving on the wood, but I'm proud of what I was able to make using the free softwares online. Thank you all for watching this video. Check out our links which are listed in the description below. If you like what we do here, please leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hope your laser cut projects turn out awesome and I'll see you on the next video.